How do you teach a computer calculus? Hello everybody, I'm Nick the Naval Architect. Welcome back to this series on the guts of CFD. In part 3, we talk about finite volume interpolation. So far we have covered the Navier-Stokes equations and the basic transport equation. Up to this point we have been dealing with differential equations. There is a problem with differential equations. Computers can't understand them. So today we are going to talk about finite volume interpolation and how we teach the computer to do calculus. Interpolation equations are the key to calculus. As I said, the computer doesn't understand calculus. If you ask it to do an infinitely small thing, it fries its circuits out. It just doesn't understand it. So we had to invent new math to be able to fake calculus in a way that the computer could understand. This was a whole branch of mathematics called originally finite difference mathematics, and it spawned a whole bunch of extra fields of study from that. The field that we applied for CFD was interpolation equations, and specifically with the finite volume interpolation. The idea of an interpolation equation is that it's some basic equation that you can apply to every single cell, it's a general equation that gets customized to every cell, and it can understand derivatives, and all you need to customize it is the value of the cell plus the values of some of the neighbors. So by doing this, we turn calculus into algebra, and now the computer can understand it. However, as you can imagine, that doesn't come without a cost. There is a pretty big source of error in this. The source of error is it really depends on how large a part those cells are. This is really where the operator comes in. The operator controls the size of those cells. They control how far apart those are. And so the quality of the interpolation equations and the spacing of the cells are very well tied together. As the operator, you have to understand which equations you're picking because it affects how much of a cell spacing you're going to be picking as well. There is more than one way to skin a cat. There's a whole branch of mathematics for this. You select the method. It isn't all the way down to the level of selecting each individual method. The major thing that you have to worry about when you're selecting your interpolation scheme is the order of the interpolation method. That's the big thing that matters. So the level of accuracy depends on the order of the interpolation method. And so we start with the basics. First order interpolation. Linear interpolation. A straight line from one point to the next. That's pretty simple. We can get a first order derivative out of that. Then we go one step up. Second order. Quadratic interpolation. That's good. Okay, now we can get a second order derivative out of that. You could theoretically go to higher order derivatives. Most solvers don't. Uh, they actually become pretty unstable at higher order derivatives. So most of the time, your choice is between first order or second order. And that's a big question that people will ask. In general, your target is always to go for second order interpolation schemes. But if your target was always to go for second order, why is there even a choice? What's the trade-off here? Well, your first order schemes, it's a lower order, it's a more stable equation, but you're actually getting more of a smeared result. Your transport equations are becoming more diffused, you are not getting as steep of a gradient calculation, and so, your, and so your results aren't resolved quite as sharply. To fix that problem with first order interpolation schemes, you would need a smaller cell size in your mesh. That's more computing cost. On the other hand, you can go to a second order interpolation scheme. That's higher order. You're going to get less errors. You can go to a larger cell size. That means faster grid convergence. Those are all good things. However, you also have slightly less stability because you're gonna get a little bit of overshoot from that step change. That's the instability problem. And in general, there are ways to correct for that. That's your under relaxation factors. That's what you have to watch for is that instability. I said go for second order wherever you can, but where would you first trip? I said go for second order whenever you can, but does that mean that you're a complete failure if you go to first order? No, I wouldn't say that. I would say it depends on the equation, how important it is. Taking a look at this table, 
This gives you a really good set of priorities. So your ideal situation, you of course want every equation to be second order interpolation. But if that doesn't work and you have an unstable stimulation, your first attempt after that, I would go then with turning my turbulence to first order interpolation. And the reason for that is that I'm picking things that are not as direct of a physical impact on my simulation. You know, my momentum and my continuity equations have the most direct physical impact on my actual results. So I don't want to touch those. Those are sacred. But turbulence isn't too bad. If that still is causing me too much difficulty, my second attempt, I'm going to take my volume fraction and put that to first order interpolation. Volume fraction is something that you'll only have if you're doing a multi-phase simulation. If you're doing all of this, you're down to that, you've got first order on your turbulence, first order on your volume fraction, you still can't get it stable, then I would say change your time step if you're doing a non-steady simulation. Change your time step, you know, make it smaller. And notice how I didn't say go to first order on any of the others. That's sort of the bare minimum there. You could go to first order on your momentum or continuity only for debugging purposes, only if you're trying to identify the source of your error. That's the only time I would ever go to first order on those, not for a final production run. And if after all of that, even after changing your time step, you're still not finding out what's going wrong, it's a mesh problem. Change your mesh, add refinements, reduce your mesh size, something. But yeah, that, that's where you have to go back to basics. Okay, so that is the basics of interpolation schemes. So to review, we've covered Navier-Stokes equations so far. Remember that's a fluid version of force equals mass times acceleration. They're basically momentum. We've covered the basic idea of transport equations. You need to be able to recognize what are convective and diffusive terms in transport equations. And then today we've covered finite volume interpolation. And the basic difference that you have to know about those are, are you picking a first order or a second order interpolation scheme? Wherever possible, you want to pick second order. Hope that's helped you. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.